All right, so we're going to do 12-2 geometric sequence. We've already talked about what a sequence was, what a thematic sequence was. Geometric sequence is a set of numbers related by constant ratio. So instead of adding each time, we're multiplying each time. We also have explicit and recursive formulas, just like with our arithmetic. We also, when we use the recursive, we have to state what that first term is. Now the explicit, if our first term is an F sub 1, we use this formula. If it's an F sub 0, we use, whoops, F sub 1, we use this formula without the minus 1. And F sub 0, we use this formula. So you kind of have to look at what's going on. A lot of times they'll tell you, so don't stress over it. For example, we write the explicit and recursive rule, or rule for a geometric sequence given the table. Notice we have a 0. That means we need to use this formula when we write the explicit. First thing, like we had to find the common difference, we have to find our common ratio. To find the common ratio, it's pretty simple. We simply take each term, and instead of subtracting them, we're going to divide it. So 6 divided by 3 is 2. 12 divided by 6, 2. 24 divided by 12, 2. 48 divided by 24, 2. So the number that keeps reappearing each time is 2. That means R is 2. So to find our explicit formula, we're going to start here. We take our first term, which is uh, 3. So we say F sub N equals 3 times our common ratio, which is 2, to the N minus 1. There is our formula. Please note, do not multiply these together. This has an exponent. The other one doesn't. So recursive, just like with arithmetic, when we use the recursive, we need to state what the first term is. So we have to say f sub 0 is 3. And then we're going to use our recursive formula that says take your common ratio and multiply it times f, f of n minus 1. So f sub n equals your common ratio of 2 times the previous term. And remember, this is just saying the previous term. And there we go. There's our recursive. Two, we're going to look at another one. This one has some fractions in it. So when we do our common ratio, we want to go 1 fifth divided by 1 over 25. Remember, we don't divide fractions. We flip it and multiply. So that's 1 over 5 times 25, which is 5. If we take 1 and multiply it or divide it by 1 fifth, flip it over, multiply, 1 times 5 is 5. 5 divided by 1 is 5. 25 divided by 5 is so R in this case is 5. So going to our explicit, notice this starts with a 1 and it's not a 0. So we have to use on the explicit this term. So we say F sub N equals the first term, which is 1 over 25, times our common ratio, which we decided was 5, to the nth power. Voila, you're done. All you're doing is writing a formula and we have a pattern to follow. For the recursive, we need to state the first term that f sub 1 is 1 over 25, because we're telling the pattern where to start. And then it's f sub n equals our common ratio of 5 times our previous term, whatever that happened to be. Same thing we did with arithmetic. We're also going to find the rule, or use the rule to find a table of values, just like we did with arithmetic. So we are going to use this rule here to find our values. So if I plug in 0, and they gave us the rule, so we have to use it. 2 to the 0 is 1, so that's 2. 2 to the first is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. That's 4. That's 8. And we keep plugging them in. We take 2 to the third power, which is 8, and then multiply it by 2 is 16. And then let's see, that'll be 32 and 64. What kind of graph do you think this is going to look like? Well, let's check. At 0, we're at 2. At 1, we're up at 4. At 2, we're up at 8. And at 3, we're going to be up at 16. So if you look at this, it's kind of curving upward a little bit. It looks like a growth function. Now, we're going to slide our board down, and we're going to look at this one over here. And on this one, we are given this function and told to create a table of values, same thing. So we plug in the 1, 
zero is that. We have to use the previous term. So we're going to multiply the previous term by half. So half of 16 is 8. Half of 8 is 4. Half of 4 is 2. Half of 2 is 1. That's 1 half. That would be 1 fourth. And then we're going to graph those values. So at 0, we're all the way up here somewhere at 16. At 1, we're at 8. At 2, we're at 4. And 3, we're at 2. 4, we're down at 1. 5, we're at 1 half. And there. So this graph is doing this bit. It has a bigger curve to it. All geometric sequences should be a curve, whether it's slight or a whole lot. All right, so we're going to look at one modeling type problem and how to use it in a real life situation. So we're going to write the explicit recursive formula that models the situation. We're going to use the sequence to answer these questions. The Women's and Ladies Singles Championship begins with 128 players. Each match, two players play and only one moves to the next round. The players compete until there's one winner. So they want to know how many rounds does their winner play? Well, if two people play and we have 128 people, that means we have 64 matches. So each time it's going to go down by half because 64 matches, that means there's going to be 64 winners, 64 people play, that's 32 matches. It's going to keep going down by half. So our explicit formula is F sub N equals 64, our R value, or excuse me, our starting match, times 1 half to the N minus 1. The recursive is F sub 1 is 64, because we start with 64 matches, and then F sub N equals 1 half, your ratio, times the previous term. So there's your two formulas. I don't want to actually do all 64 matches out, so I want to find out how many matches the winner will have. So we want to know when F equals the winner, 64 times 1 half to the 1 minus 1, that's 64 times 1 half to the 0. Anything to the 0 power is 1. So this winner will have played all 64 matches.